Hey, what's going on everybody? So I'm back with another project. I hope you guys are all doing well and practicing your social distancing. I know I haven't been out of my house in about two weeks, and somehow I've still managed to procrastinate long enough on making this video. I know I said I wouldn't take another three months to upload a video, but I just can't help myself. Anyway, as you guys can tell, today we're going to be talking about Tetris. Now, Tetris is a game that I've been wanting to work on for quite a while, but I just couldn't figure out how to get in there how to play it efficiently. But I think I finally got something figured out. What do you guys think? Okay, shitty jokes aside, this was actually my first attempt at making the AI, and clearly it's terrible, and that's for a couple reasons. This approach used a very similar strategy that I've done in the Snake AI project and the Doodle Jump project, where the game state is encoded and passed to the neural network, and the output of the neural network is keyboard input. The first reason this doesn't really work in this case is because the way the game state is encoded into the neural network is really bad. I used 14 inputs, 10 of them are the height of each column in the game, one of them is an index representing what piece is in play, another value represents the rotation of that piece, and then the last two represent the x and y coordinates of that piece. This just simply does not provide enough information to allow the AI to learn anything about what's going on in the game. The second reason this doesn't really work is because making real-time keyboard input decisions is not really necessary for Tetris, because Tetris is pretty predetermined. What I mean is, when you play Tetris, you already have a good idea where your piece is going to go before you actually place it, so there's kind of no need to make real-time decisions. So after this failure, I decided to ditch the neural network approach and move towards a strategy that used predetermined moves. Like I said, Tetris is pretty predetermined, so I had an idea that this would work a lot better, and it really did. So the way this approach works is every time a piece comes into play, the program calculates every possible position that it can place that piece. It then scores every one of those moves and then chooses the highest scoring move. The way the score is calculated is when a move is being checked, the program calculates certain features about the terrain that would result from executing that move. The features include terrain height, which is not the maximum height of the structure, but it's actually the difference in height between adjacent columns. This allows the system to have an idea of the bumpiness of the terrain, also the amount of holes that are created, and the amount of lines cleared. I got the idea to use this approach from watching a video by Loonride, where he built a Tetris AI using this strategy. If you want to check out his video, I'll link it in the description. Now you could just take those features and stick them in a function that would give you the score of each move or you can let an AI find that function for you. The way I did this is by assigning weights to each one of those features and then using a genetic algorithm to actually optimize those weights to create a better score function. Now this approach worked fine, but one problem I had with it is that it's essentially just a linear regression algorithm. And while linear regression could definitely work for a problem like this, the quality of moves in Tetris is definitely not a linear function. For example, clearing lines is way more important when your structure is very tall versus when it's very short. Because when it's very tall, you need to clear lines faster, otherwise you're going to lose the game. This relationship between variables is known as collinearity. And while linear regression can handle some collinear relationships, I just decided that I wanted to try using a nonlinear function instead to estimate the score. And what's my favorite nonlinear function estimator? That's right, neural networks. Yeah, I, I, I had to throw neural networks in this project somehow. So I replaced that weighted function with a neural network that takes those features as input and outputs a score. I also added two other features, the maximum and minimum height of the structure. I also adjusted the way the actual in-game score is calculated. I added the ability for the program to get Tetrises and Tetris bonuses. Basically, every line cleared in the game is worth 100 points. Every Tetris, which is four lines, is worth 800 points, and then every back-to-back -back Tetris is worth 1,200 points. I'm also using the actual in-game score as the fitness function for the genetic algorithm as opposed to the amount of lines cleared, and what this will do is it'll allow the system to understand how to make Tetrises, because two players could have the same amount of lines cleared, but one could have a higher score because it gets more Tetrises. And I'm really happy with how this thing works. Check it out.
So that works great, but you might be wondering, well, what happens if you give it next piece knowledge? And if you thought that that would improve its performance, you'd be absolutely right. So you'll notice that it's running a lot slower when it has to use next piece knowledge, and that's because it's calculating a lot more moves. There are 10 columns and four rotations for every piece, which comes out to about 40 moves, but for every one of those 40 moves, it now has to calculate another 40 moves for that next piece, which comes out to about 40 squared, or 1600 moves. It also has to calculate all 1600 moves for every 200 members of the population. Clearly this is gonna take a while, so at this point I went to sleep, and when I woke up this is what happened. So already at generation 11, this population has achieved a high score of over 1.3 million, and that's about 13,000 lines, give or take. It depends on the Tetris scoring, but I wasn't able to capture that run on video, although I did capture this run, which is still really impressive. So anyway, I'm really happy with how this project turned out. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun working on this project, mostly because a lot of it was done on my live stream. Given the current situation, I've been doing live streams more often because there's not really much else to do and I thought that people might be interested in how these projects are made. So I just want to say thank you to you guys who watch these videos. I really appreciate all of your support. If you enjoyed this video, then maybe consider subscribing and ringing the bell because I guess subscriptions aren't enough. If you like my work and you want to go the extra mile, then your support on Patreon would be so appreciated. I'll leave a link to that in the description. Also, if you want to give me a follow on Twitter so you can keep up to date with projects and other shit that's going on. I also just want to give a huge thanks to my friend Josh who produces the music on most of my videos. You guys should absolutely check him out. I'll leave a link to his SoundCloud and his YouTube in the description. Anyway, that's it for me. I hopefully won't take another three months to upload a video. I really don't want to get into this habit. I'll be posting an update video on my capstone very soon, so you guys can look forward to that. And that's it. I guess I'll see you guys later.